Bertram has to put it up with the buzzer. Banks it in! Oh, he banks in the three! One of the greatest players in NBA history, Kobe Bryant is a five-time NBA champ, 14-time All-Star, and veteran of over 1,300 NBA games. Growing up a Lakers fan, young Kobe watched his heroes bring showtime to the fabulous forum. And just a few years later, he found himself beginning a Hall of Fame career on that very same hardwood. We took Kobe back to the early years, before the accolades and championships, to the forum, where it all began. This is where it all began. Yeah. Do you remember walking in here as an 18 year old, like that first day? Okay, of what was that like? I, I it was like the smell. You know what I mean? Like when you walk in, you it's like, oh, it smells like the forum. I don't know what the smell is. What does forum, the forum, forum, forum smell, smell like? like? <laughs> but this is what it smells like, right? So I'm like trying to hold on to it. And I don't know. It was pretty dorky of me, but I, you know, I was looking forward to it. And so to have a chance to. Put on that uniform must have been unbelievable. Yes, the first first uh, first time I ever saw my uniform hanging in the hanging in the lock, I put it on right away. It just felt like I was putting on golden armor. Really? Yes. Yeah, so from that day forward, I always just called it the golden armor. It just felt like it was something mystical, and magical about it. Where were the celebrities? They they were like all court right side. on the Everybody court, was right? Court side. Right. So it was like Jack. Yep. Right. Diane. Diane. Always there. Denzel was Denzel, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so for me, a you 17-year-old know, kid, I'm like, Man, this is nuts. Like so many other Hollywood hopefuls, Bryant arrived in Los Angeles as an 18-year-old with big-time dreams. <laughs> dreams forged on the blacktop courts of Philadelphia, where growing up as the son of local NBA legend Joe Jellybean Bryant. Guaranteed Kobe no preferential treatment during pickup games. I'd play against these kids, and all summer long, I didn't score one point. Not one point. And I'm, I'm, I'm like getting crushed out here. You know what I mean? And it's embarrassing for my father because my father's like a Philly legend. And at the end of the summer, I'm, I'm in my grandmother's house and I'm walking and I'm like in tears. And my father goes, You know what, son? I don't care if you score zero or score 60. I love you anyway. And, you know, I remember that. I remember that and, you know, it had a deep impact on me and, and, and I was like, you know, it made me feel really good, made me feel secure. And then at the same time, it also pushed that button in me where I was just like, you know what? Thank you, but I'm scoring 60. He has 60 points tonight. He is not human. Not for Bryant. How the hell are you done? Kobe Bryant elevating. A 360 jam. Kobe. Kobe, Kobe. So where did you develop that fierce will to win? My mother, probably. My mom was the, always a real feisty one, you know, the real competitive one. And, uh, and my father, you know, was always kind of the happy-go-lucky one that was out there just playing, having fun, still competitive, but, you know, my mom was the, the real temper. A veteran of nearly 60,000 minutes of NBA basketball, Bryant has learned to maintain his level of play through a multitude of injuries and ailments. How have you played through the injuries that you've played through? I, I just ignore them. I just ignore them. I mean, there's going to be times where you, you, you face situations where they just seem insurmountable. Where you have injuries that you just, I have no idea how I'm going to play with this thing. I have no idea how we're going to beat this team. And you have to somehow figure out a way to to make it happen. How do you feel about pain? Oh, man. Yeah, at, there's some level you come to accept it. Mm -hmm. And it even becomes enjoyable sometimes. In what way? It's just another challenge. You know, it's just another challenge. And a lot of times, I, I'd, I'd rather, for big games, I'd rather be injured or sick. Why is that? Because, because it slows the game down. You know, you don't try to do too much. You just try to keep things extremely simple. And when you're sick sometimes, when you're injured, you're forced to do that, as opposed to being extremely healthy and feeling fresh, and now you want to do this, and you want to do that, and you want to, you know? It just kind of slows the game down sometimes. So the struggle is OK. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You played that whole season with the finger, torn tendon. Yeah. And went back and had to actually relearn how to shoot. Yeah, I had to learn how to shoot the ball over again. 
I mean, you've been known to take, what, 100,000 shots in the course of a summer? Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I take a lot of shots. <laughs> That's a pretty crazy work ethic. Well, but you know, it, it doesn't seem like it's work to me because I, I, I truly love what I'm doing. You know, it wasn't until I became older that I realized that I'm actually working hard. And like, when other players started looking at me like I was crazy, it was like, oh, wait, you, you guys don't do this? You know, but they don't love the game like I do. Like, this is fun to me. It's not, it's not like, oh, I gotta go work out. It's like, I gotta go work out. You know, it's, it's fun. How do you see the game differently? I genuinely love it. I love, I love everything about it. The ups, the downs, you know, it's the, the challenge of it. It's, uh, it's just such a beautiful sport. And it's in rhythm. And you can feel it. You can feel the energy. That's pure beauty. And it's just pure energy. And it's, it's tough to really figure out how to make that happen. But when that happens, that's it's amazing. Kobe Bryant has spent half his life living in a city known for its glamorous personalities and over-the-top excess. But just miles from the glitz of Beverly Hills and mere blocks from the Staples Center, live some of Los Angeles's estimated 51,000 homeless, a segment of his community that Bryant is committed to helping through his charitable foundation. For our youth to be out there stranded in the street, feeling like there's nobody else that can support them or help them or give them guidance to be able to follow or, or, or achieve their dreams is weak. It's weak. And it's a problem that we can address. It's something that we can solve, and we're going to go after, and we're going to solve it. So after home games, you've gotten in the car you've driven by skid row mm -hmm. tell me some of the things that you've seen oh i've seen i've seen kids that seem to be nothing no more than 10 or 11 years old by themselves by themselves just laying on the street cuddling next to each other on the, on the pavement trying to keep warm it's a crazy way to live you can't you can't just sit back and just let that go and do you think here i am a multi-millionaire and I'm playing basketball in this beautiful arena and we're like literally right next to yeah, where no, this is happening. Yeah, I mean, not only that, like I'm thinking, I just left this arena and you know, there's all of these celebrities and these seats cost like, you know, $1,500, you know, and then all of these people who have all this money in this place and a couple blocks up, you know, you have the situations that, that is diametrically opposed to the scene inside of Staples Center. But everybody inside of this arena, if everybody pitched in just a little bit, would make a huge, huge difference. Huge difference. Tackling the homeless issue in Los Angeles is a sign of the ongoing maturation of Bryant that began 16 years ago when he first arrived in LA. As an 18-year-old kid, mm -hmm. what were you like? Um, stubborn, uh, extremely competitive. And, you know, I thought I knew it all, just like any other 18-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> must have been a headache for my coaches, I'm sure. Uh, what was it that brought, kind of brought you back down to earth once you got in the pros? Just old age. Yeah. Just old age. You know, the older you get. And then, you know, what's funny is what, happens, what starts happening is that, you know, you start having younger players come to the team. Right. And then, you know, they essentially act how you used to act when you were 18 so oh. you get to kind of see yourself through them and you're like oh my god hold on wait a minute okay and then that's how you kind of start growing up and i'm just very excited to be here with uh with los angeles lakers and to have a guy like magic johnson who can guide me to the right direction magic johnson was your idol mm -hmm. right yeah. so you had it when you were growing up in italy you had a poster of him in your oh middle? i had many of them many you got his locker Right? Yeah, which they didn't, they didn't tell me about that until later. I, I, one of the, uh, my first press conferences, the preseason game, I say, so, uh, so did you ask for Magic's Locker? I'm like, what? This you is Magic's Locker? I was like, what? No, I had no idea. So somebody must have played like a very cruel joke on the rookie. <laughs> it gave me the pressure seat. Which you handled well. I mean, you know, at, at that time, I didn't have much of a choice. They already stuck me in that locker. It's like, you know, if you leave from here, if you, if I ask to switch the locker, I'm like the biggest chump in the world. So <laughs> I kind of had right. to suck it up, you know? This was my locker right here. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is my locker right here. Eddie Jones was right here. What was school. it like in here when you were you were just a youngster? Um, well, I mean, it was, it was interesting because we had a lot of interesting characters on the team. So mm -hmm. every day was something brand new. How were you and Shaq in the early going? You guys came in at the same time. It's amazing that it actually worked. 
You know, yeah. see, I mean, he was young at the time, and I was younger. And so you're talking about two very bullheaded individuals. And I think the, Phil's magic was being able to get us to move in the same direction. And us as well, being able to put our differences aside and say, let's get this thing done. I've been coached by the big Buddha himself, Phil Jackson, mm -hmm. which has been, you know, I guess, yeah, I still talk to him every now and then. And I know he has to be laughing internally because he's probably listening to me through interviews and stuff. And it's like, wow, this stubborn kid, like he actually heard some of the things I was saying to him. It actually went through. <laughs> it sunk in. It sunk in. I, who would have known? <laughs> it's like raising a teenager. Exactly. <laughs> that's what he was, essentially, that's what he was doing, really, is, you know, raising this, uh, trying to tame this horse. So you feel those voices, like, back in your head now? Yeah, sometimes yeah. I say things, and I, you know, I step back, I'm like, wow, that sounds, sounds mm -hmm. like Phil. How much you want to keep playing? How long? Uh, I don't know. I mean, 16 years is a long time. I, I don't know how many years I have left, and it's kind of like, you know, what, what's going to go first? You know, is the passion for the game going to go first, or are these young guys just going to run me out the gym to the point where just, they just beat me in a submission? <laughs> I got to just, like, you know, white flag it and say, that's it, no mas, <laughs> I, I, I'm done. You know, with, with, how's it going to work out? I have no clue. You don't know? You, don't you really know. think your passion for the game would run out at some point? I, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how that works. I don't know how it happens. You know, I, I see the guys who've come before me. I've seen Magic retire and come back. You know, I've seen Michael retire and come back several times, and it's like, well, why does that happen? And, you know, I remember being in the locker room and telling our old uh, trainer, Chip Schaefer, was like, dude, once I hang it up, that's it. I am gone. I'm never coming back to play basketball. Once I, once I retire, that's it. And he just looks at me and goes, you know what, young fella? I remember a player I had in Chicago saying the exact same thing to me, and he came back twice. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, ah, 